What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now today I've got an absolutely epic story of revenge for you. The title of this video might be pretty simple, but today's only story is far from it. After finding out that one of his best friend's husband has been cheating on her and having an affair after over 30 years of marriage, this man makes it his life's mission to ruin that guy's life. I ruined a man's life. This happened about four years ago. But I recently found out how part of my revenge plan panned out, which is what prompted me to post this. I have never shared this with anyone before. First of all, some background. My mum has been best friends with Eileen, not her real name, since they were both kids. And Eileen has kind of been like an aunt to me. About five years ago, Eileen's husband of more than 25 years surprised her by asking for a divorce. Eileen lived about six hours away from my mum at the time, and I lived out of state. So I didn't find out how everything went down until a few months after their divorce was finalized. Unfortunately, Eileen's life kind of spiraled out of control after the separation. She developed depression and a drinking problem. But my mum and some other childhood friends were able to convince her to move back to her hometown, and then they convinced her to go to rehab. I moved back home shortly before Eileen went to rehab, and because my school work schedule was pretty flexible, I was able to house it and take care of some stuff while she was in rehab. The first time I visited her in rehab, I got the whole divorce story, and it was bad. Eileen's ex, Jeff, also not his real name, hadn't talked to Eileen about any problems prior to asking for a divorce, So she just assumed that he'd fell out of love with her. But I was immediately skeptical about the things Eileen told me. First, Jeff, who was an executive at a pharmaceutical company earning mid six figures, was fired from his job a year before they split up. And he decided to take a break before looking for another job. It was weird to me that Jeff decided to take a break from work because he'd always been such a workaholic. Eileen hasn't worked in years because of a disability, but she has some property and a trust her parents left her that lets her live a comfortable life without working. Jeff and Eileen lived off money from the trust while he was unemployed. Then, after Jeff said he wanted a divorce, he refused to go to couples therapy or talk about why he wanted the divorce. The only thing he would say was that they had grown apart and that he was sick of being with a woman like Eileen. He said Eileen's mother was right about her. Eileen's mother was a classic narcissist and she bullied Eileen horribly about her attractiveness, weight, intelligence, etc., which caused a lot of psychological problems that Jeff knows about. Finally, right after the divorce was finalized, Jeff moved out of state, but to a state he didn't have any family or connections in. Jeff's parents are still alive and in their 80s, 90s, and Jeff is pretty close to them. So it didn't make any sense to me why Jeff wouldn't move to be closer to them if he wanted to move after the divorce. I didn't say anything to Eileen because I didn't want to upset her, but I thought Jeff might have been having an affair, had orchestrated his unemployment to avoid paying a limony, and then moved out of state to be with his mistress. I just didn't have a way to confirm it at the time. Now moving on to part two, the investigation. Then Eileen asked me to look for a box of Jeff's stuff he had asked her to hold for him until he moved into his new apartment. She told me all the info on the box, its contents, and his new address was in an email he sent her, and she gave me the password to her computer so I could access the email. This is where I lucked out. It turns out Jeff had used her computer and set up his email on the computer. I accidentally clicked on the app for his email when I was searching for Eileen's email. I decided to take a peek at his email. Now, the first thing I noticed was that he had mostly stopped using that email address three years before, which was about one year before he was fired. In a folder for digital receipts, I found a confirmation email for a dating site, either POF or Match, I can't remember which, which I think he saved there accidentally. I also found a verification email for a new email address. I started to put together a speculative timeline of what happened. I guess that about three years before, Jeff started an affair, and shortly after, he decided to get a new email address to help keep the affair secrets. I wanted to access his dating profile to get more information, so I tried to use the forgot password feature to see if I could generate an email that would allow me to reset the password and log in that way. Unfortunately, the dating site didn't recognize Jeff's old email address. I thought I might be able to get into Jeff's new email using his old email to reset the passwords. 
and then maybe I could use the new email to get into the dating websites. But I didn't want to risk locking Jeff out of his new email and alerting him until I knew more about what he'd done. And here is where I totally lucked out. The email app Jeff downloaded to Eileen's MacBook had a note feature and super genius Jeff saved some passwords on notes. Now, most of the passwords weren't helpful, but I did get the password to the dating site and his Twitter and Netflix accounts. I logged into the dating site using his new email address and the passwords. I was able to read messages Jeff sent to another woman before he broke up with Eileen. The new mistress sent Jeff her email address in one of the messages. So I searched Facebook for the mistress's email address and found her profile. I couldn't read her posts, but she left her photos public. She had recent photos of her and Jeff, so I knew they were still together. She'd also posted a photo of a construction crew breaking ground on a new home for her and Jeff, which was interesting because I got the impression from Eileen that Jeff didn't have a lot of money after the divorce. Here is where my background is important. At the time, I was attending law school. I moved back to my hometown for one semester for a legal residency and I had access to Lexus's database, specifically their public records database. I spent a good portion of one of my summer internships tracking down property records and other assets to help recover judgments for clients, so I knew how to search for public records. The mistress had purchased several acres in a wealthy suburb several months before Jeff filed for divorce, and there was no mortgage listed on the record. I'd already found the mistress's LinkedIn page, so I knew she worked as an executive assistant before she moved out of state with Jeff. Now, she didn't advertise her salary, but I doubted she could have afforded the property with her salary alone. It's possible she had money outside her salary, but I suspected Jeff gave her money to purchase the land before the divorce. I also found an updated record in Lexis showing Jeff and the mistress as joint owners of the property. I called the county recorder officer to confirm ownership of the property, dates, etc. The mistress had filed a quit claim just five weeks after Jeff's divorce was finalized. I was still hesitant to try to log into Jeff's new email, so I decided to check his old email again to see if there was anything else I should investigate before moving to the new email. I didn't find anything, but I noticed that several passwords in his notes were the same. So I decided to try and log into his new email using the same password he used for the dating site. I figured the two accounts were created around the same time. So if he had recycled his password, that was the most likely candidate. It worked. His new email was a goldmine. Because this story is already getting ridiculously long, I'll list some of the relevant stuff I found. Jeff hadn't been fired from his old job. He quit and lied to Eileen. I found an email from his admin asking where to have his payroll send his last check and details about a goodbye party for him. Some emails between Jeff and a boat repair person mentioning a leak somewhere on the side of the sailboat near the engine compartments. The repair guy couldn't find the source of the leak, but he talked about current and future problems with mold and the engine on that side. Emails between Jeff and a boat broker, which included the email address of buyers farther down in the string. An emailed report from the boat inspector, which didn't include the leak or any mold damage or potential damage to the engine. Emails between Jeff and his contractor about changes made to the new house's sunroom. Something about a three-season sunroom versus a four-season sunroom and the construction needing to be modified to deal with the weight of snow. Emails between Jeff and the mistress. They had married. The mistress and Jeff shared a calendar some flirty emails between Jeff and another woman, and finally, emails with info on Jeff's new employer. I downloaded all the important emails and their attachments and started thinking about a revenge plan. So then, moving on to part three now, the part you've all been waiting for, revenge. To my mind, everything was fair game. He lied about being fired, so I wanted him fired from his new job. I suspected he hid his money before his separation from Eileen to help pay for his new house, so I wanted him to lose his new house. He cheated, so I wanted to destroy his new relationship. Anything I could do about the boat was an absolute bonus. The easiest place to start was that boat. I had no idea if the source of the leak was found and repaired, or if the leak was verbally disclosed to the buyer, 
but I figured Jeff was a lying jerk, so odds were fair he hid the info from the new buyer. I sent the emails between Jeff and the repairman and another copy of the inspection to the buyer. I searched Jeff's county court website five, six months later and found out the buyers filed a suit against Jeff and the broker and inspector. Ha! I couldn't figure out how to take or destroy Jeff's house. So I settled for contacting the county inspector's office to complain about the sunroom not being up to code. That is so petty, but so good. I love it. This is actually what prompted me to write this post because I just found out some details about what happened with those county inspectors. Keep in mind, I heard about this from a third party years after the fact, so I don't know all the details. It turns out the sunroom was code compliant, but the inspector did find a workshop or workroom attached to the detached garage that wasn't on the original permits or plans. The workshop had a bathroom that the contractor attached to the property's septic system after the initial inspection. A mutual friend of Eileen and Jeff told Eileen and me, and he guessed this was a big deal because the size of the septic system they installed wasn't sized to handle the additional inputs, but I don't know for sure. Jeff had to pay a fine and the workshop had to be removed. This ended up causing construction delays, which will become relevant below. As for destroying Jeff's marriage, my first impulse was to send the new wife the flirty emails between Jeff and the other woman. But when I searched for that woman on social media, I couldn't find anything. I had no way of knowing if the new wife knew the other woman and would think that the emails weren't important or evidence of an affair. Then I played around with the idea of updating Jeff's dating profile and sending stuff to his wife. But it would take too long to manufacture a fake relationship with real dates and times And I was worried that jeff might get an email alert from the dating site that would clue him in I ended up just risking that the new wife wouldn't know the other woman I pretended to be someone concerned about an affair between jeff and the new woman Overall, I kept the accusation vague But I did say jeff and the new girl went out to eat and to the movies on a few dates where jeff's share calendar Said that his new wife was out of town. I couldn't come up with a way to get jeff fired I rechecked his email and calendar over several weeks looking for something I could use to get him gone Eventually my legal residency got too busy to devote much time to revenge So I decided to just let it go Eileen recently reconnected with a friend she shared with jeff and that friend gave Eileen an update on jeff Eileen shared the details with me and that's what reminded me of what I did and prompted this story It turned out that I didn't need to worry about sabotaging jeff's career By luck, the woman Jeff had been emailing was actually his assistant at his new job and Jeff's new boss was his brother-in-law. Jeff and his new wife actually moved to her hometown so she could be close to her family and so Jeff could go to work for his new brother-in-law. I have no idea if Jeff actually was cheating. He told the mutual friend that passed this story on to Eileen that they hadn't been having an affair. It didn't matter to his new wife though. Because she and Jeff got together when Jeff was already married, she didn't have a lot of trust for Jeff. She therefore didn't believe Jeff's denials when I sent the email about him having an affair. She filed for divorce and Jeff's brother-in-law boss fired him. And since the construction was delayed, the new house wasn't finished when Jeff and his new wife divorced. They had to sell an unfinished home and Jeff therefore took a big financial hit. Finally, these weren't part of my larger revenge plan, but I am pretty petty. So I took the box of Jeff's stuff, mostly photographs, and threw them away. I told Eileen they must have been lost in the move. Signed both of Jeff's email addresses for a bunch of spam, newsletters, mailing lists, etc. Deleted his Netflix watch list. I mean, that seriously, that, that is very, very petty, my God. Posted, retweeted, and liked a bunch of prawn on his Twitter accounts and deleted all the accounts he was following. My God. Yes, that is very petty. I absolutely love it. And now moving on to the final part of this story, the ending. I never told Eileen what I did because I wanted her to have plausible deniability and I didn't want to interfere with her recovery. She doesn't know about the boat lawsuit or the Netflix Twitter stuff, but she did take satisfaction from his divorce and job loss. I probably would have let it all go if Jeff had just cheated because I had actually always really liked Jeff. I always thought he was nice, but I was obviously wrong about him. Nice people don't weaponize childhood abuse to mentally torture their wives. As far as I'm concerned, Jeff deserved everything I did to him. And there we go, guys. That is the end of that one. Um, Wow, what a whirlwind of a revenge story. Absolutely loved it. Great detail, great revenge. 
Honestly, my favorite part is the petty stuff that you've just thrown in for no real reason. It's not going to have much of an effect, but it's going to let Jeff know that someone is really messing with him. Someone is behind this all. I wonder if he's going to know or, or, or kind of work out that it's you. He probably won't, right? I mean, how could he? You haven't really, you know, left any sort of like trail behind what you're doing. But the petty stuff, like just unfollowing accounts on Twitter, liking loads of like nude stuff, and then just also like screwing up his Netflix watch list. That's the sort of stuff that is not going to have any long term effect, but it's really going to annoy him in the short term. Term. On top of all the amount of other bad things that happened to him, losing his new wife, losing his house, then when he wants to go home, relax, browse Twitter, watch Netflix, he can't even do that in peace either. Brilliant stuff. It is actually very interesting, you know, because like OP said at the end there, he has known Jeff for a long time and he's always thought he was a very nice guy. It just proves that unless you really, really, really know somebody, you don't really know them at all, I guess. And as for Eileen, look, I'm just so sorry that she had to go through all of that. I mean, being cheated on is one thing, but then having that cheating husband bring up old childhood trauma just to, you know, stick it to you. Wow, that is something else. Unbelievable. I'm so sorry. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of r slash pro revenge. Really enjoyed this story. If you did and you want more, first of all, drop a like on the video. It lets me know that you enjoyed this one. If you want more right away, check out this playlist of all my revenge stories. You know what? I'll put a playlist up here right at the top. And if you want to watch a movie of all my revenge stories, or at least a lot of revenge stories in one video, check out this down here. This is like a long movie. If you're going to sleep or chilling or you want a longer video, this is the one for you. That's got what? About 15 plus revenge stories in it. It's brilliant. Check it out.